Okay, so if you are taking a New York State teacher certification exam, and uh, this could be the B2 or 1 through 6, there's a lot of these uh, certification exams. You're going to be facing a math section. So irrespective of what uh, test you're going to be taking, you should be able to answer this question without the aid of a calculator. So we have the square root of 20 plus the square root of 45. What is the answer? Well, we have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our options. So A is the square root of 50. B is 3 times the square root of 2 over 10. C is 5 times the square root of 5. And D is 7 times the square root of 2. So once again, try not to use a calculator, but uh, if you want to pause the video and work on this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to solve this problem. All right, so once again, we have the square root of 20 plus the square root of 45. What is the correct answer? Well, C is the right choice. So if you got this right, that is fantastic. But again, there is a lot of math on these New York State teacher certification exams. Now, before we get into the video solution here, I just want to tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And I certainly understand what it's like to take a certification exam. I'm going to leave a link to my test prep courses for New York State teacher certification examinations. You can find a link to those in the description of this video. But uh, let's go ahead and see exactly how to solve this problem. All right, so we need to review some basic concepts of square roots. And when we are trying to add and subtract square roots, we can do so when the square roots are the same. Now, when we're talking about square roots, we have different operations that we need to consider. So adding and subtracting square roots basically work one way, and then multiplication and division of square roots is a different uh, kind of topic altogether. So adding and subtracting square roots, again, is pretty much the same uh, procedure or, or same uh, skills involved. So let's take a look at these two simple examples. All right, so we have two times, uh, two times the square root of seven plus four times the square root of seven. So this is one problem. And then we have another problem down here, two times the square root of seven plus four times the square root of 11. Now, one of these we can add and one we cannot, okay? And the one that we can add is this one right here. So the um, property of square roots that you need to know is when you're trying to add or subtract any two square roots, you can do so if the square roots are exactly the same. Okay, so in this case, we have to have, or we have two square roots of sevens. Okay, so this is two square roots of seven plus four square roots of seven because they both have a square root of seven. Well, then we can go ahead and actually add these two uh, terms or these two uh, numbers together. So the way we do that is add the numbers in front of the square roots. So uh, two plus four is six. So what we have here is six square roots of seven or six square root of seven, okay? So if we have two square roots of seven over here, right? Here's a square root of seven. Here's a square root of seven, that's two. Over here we have four square roots of seven. So there's one, two, three, four. In total, we have six square roots of seven or six times the square root of seven. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. So we have two times the square root of seven plus four times the square root of 11. The first thing you need to check is, uh, do we have the same radical or square root? We have a square root of seven here and a square root of 11 here. So we cannot add these two terms. So what is the answer? Well, the answer is just basically what it is. This is as fully simplified as you can write this uh, number, okay? All right, so if you understand that, well, this is the first step in order, to, uh, in order to figure out this problem. Okay, but we have another situation here, and that, has, that is we have the square root of 20 plus the square root of 45. These two square roots are uh, not written in its uh, kind of most simplest terms. In other words, we can rewrite 
these two square roots in a different way so we can judge uh, whether we, in fact we can add these two square roots. So right here, you might be saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is square root of 20, square root of 45. These are not the same, so we cannot answer or we cannot add these two square roots. So you might be saying, oh, I'm so smart. Uh, you know, I understand what's going on. Well, that's very good. However, there is another step here because we have to simplify these two square roots. And then we need to determine whether we can add uh, uh, the simplified version of these square roots. Now, what am I talking about? Well, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in just one second. But first, I want to kind of give you a simple example of what I mean about simplifying square roots. So here we have the square root of 20. Okay, we can write the square root of 20 in a simpler way. Matter of fact, in mathematics, it's almost like a requirement. Okay, it's very much like if you have a fraction 100 over 300, you wouldn't leave your final answer as 100 over 300. You would simplify this number down to one third. Okay, you would reduce or simplify the fraction. Same kind of idea with square roots. We can simplify these square roots into easier to work with numbers. We must do this in order to judge whether we can in fact add these two square roots. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we, we need to kind of take, another, take a, a look at another property of square roots, and that is something called perfect square factors. All right, so here we have the square root of 20 plus the square root of 45. Let's uh, uh, take a look at the square root of 20. Now you can see here I'm writing the square root of 20 as the square root of 4 times 5 because 4 times 5 is 20. Okay, so the square root of 20 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 5. But uh, there's another way we can write the square root of 20. You could write this as two, the square root of 2 times 10. So uh, both of these are correct. Okay, the square root of 4 times 5 and the square root of 2 times 10. These are both the square root of 20. But I don't want to work with this version of the square root of 20, the square root of 2 times 10. Now, why? Because I'm looking for something called perfect squared factors, perfect squared factors. Factors. What are these? Well, let me go ahead and get, uh, first of all, review what a factor is. So, four and five, these numbers right here are factors of 20. Okay, for 45, nine and five are factors of 20. Two and 10 are also uh, factors of 20, but we're looking for something very specific called perfect square factors. So, what is a perfect square? Perfect squares are these numbers four. 9, 16, 25, 36, and on and on and on. What is the pattern here? Well, all these numbers, when I take the square root of these perfect square factors, I give a I get a nice, lovely whole number, right? So the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is 4, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're looking specifically for perfect square factors as being a factor of our square roots. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what to do. All right, so we have the square root of 20, and I'm thinking, all right, are there any perfect square factors here? Numbers like 4, 16, 9. Yes, of course, right? 4. 4 times 5 is the square root of 20, but 4 is a perfect square factor. So I want to think of the square root of 20 as 4 times 5, and you'll see why this is important in just one second. Before we continue with the video, I want to tell you a little bit about my New York State Teacher Certification Exam Math Test Prep courses. So you can find a link to these in the description of this video, but uh, basically I have test prep courses for each one of the certification exams. So this would include uh, birth to grade two, uh, one through six, seven through 12, and others as well. But uh, I think the great thing about my courses is it's being taught from a fellow teacher. And what I'm trying to do is get you fully prepared, not only for the exam, but for the classroom as well. So if you are struggling getting ready for one of these exams, definitely check out my test prep courses. They will help you out big time. So let's get back to the problem. So now let's take a look at the square root of 45. Is there any perfect square factors uh, in 45? Yes, indeed, nine, right? So nine is a perfect square because nine times five is 45 and 9 is a perfect square factor. Okay, so we're getting there 
And what we need to do is say, all right, well, we have these perfect square factors. So the square root of 20 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 5. I like this perfect square factor here. The square root of 45 is the same thing as the square root of 9 times 5. 9 is a perfect square factor, but why is this uh, important? Why do we want uh, to find these perfect square factors? Well, there is a great property of square roots that basically uh, allows us to do the following. So notice we have the square root, one big square root over 4 times 5. Well, what we can do is break up this one big square root over these factors as individual square roots of the factors. Okay, so instead of uh, the square root of 4 times 5, you can literally write this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. That is another property of square roots. So over here, the square root of 9 times 5, we can write this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. And now by doing this, well, this is going to be super awesome because we can take the square root of 4 and we can take the square root of 9 without using a calculator. So now that we know the, that we can break up the square root of 20 and the square root of 45 into uh, it's the square root of the individual factors of those numbers, but in particular, uh, we're looking for perfect square factors, well, then we could take the square root of these perfect square factors, right? So the square root of 4 is what? Well, that's 2. So now we have 2 times the square root of 5, and that's going to be added to the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. The square root of 9 is 3 times the square root of 5. And now we have this math problem, okay? We're looking to see if we can add these two square roots. So what am I focusing in on? Well, I'm looking at do they have the same square root? And now they do, right? Because they both have the square root of 5. So all we, we, all we need to do is add the coefficients, which are the numbers in front of the square roots. So this is 2 times the square root of 5 plus 3 times the square root of 5. So 2 and 3 is 5. So our answer is 5 times the square root of 5. So I hope this video helped you out in your preparation for the New York State Teacher Certification exams. And uh, again, there is a lot of math on these exams. So if you did well with this problem, that is fantastic. But there is a lot of math to know to be fully prepared for the New York State Teacher Certification Examinations. So make sure to check out my test prep courses. Again, you can find links to all of those in the description of this video. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your teaching adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.